Hello again fellas, it's me again. Just another quick video today. We're going to have a look at this new toy I've got to play with. It's a Tektronix 2211 Digital Storage Oscilloscope. But don't get excited. In Digital Storage mode, it's only got a bandwidth of DC to 1 MHz. And it's got not much in the way of sample memory. But in Analog mode, it's got a bandwidth of DC to 50 MHz. And it's a twin channel scope. So let's check it out. Here's a quick look at the front panel. Pretty standard layout for an old scope. You can see the two analog inputs with the vertical control above them. To the right you've got the horizontal time base. To the right of that you've got the external trigger input. A variety of triggering options above that. At the very top you've got the storage mode functions. And to the left of that, which is quite useful, is you've got a cursor function which is quite good for making precise measurements of the waveforms. So it's quite a pretty neat and well laid out oscilloscope. On the side of the unit there's the connection for a printer along with some dip switches for the various configurations and an import for an external frequency reference. Also you've got the tilting bale attachment and further down, as you can probably already hear it, there is a fan, which might sound quite loud on camera, but it's barely noticeable in real life. On the other side of the unit, there's nothing. On top, there's a few stickers. The one on the right is the extended service warranty by Tektronix, which is probably well expired by now. And on the left is the calibration sticker, which has shown us that it was last calibrated week 25 of 2000 so it's 15 years out of calibration never mind it'll work okay these are made to last these old scopes there's a quick look at the rear panel you've got your standard IEC mains input the voltage selection switch and the placard for the serial number if you look it's quite low actually it's only 592 and at the start you've got the code of E2 E2 designates that this was made in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much, champion. Here it is compared with a modern digital storage oscilloscope, a Regal DS1054Z, which shares the same DC to 50 megahertz bandwidth, although mine has been upgraded to the full 100 megahertz. You can see from the size difference They've come a long way since the 1980s. So let's put some signals to it and see what we get. Right, we're feeding in a 10 kHz sinusoidal waveform, uh, 1 volt peak to peak. And as you can see, the waveform is being correctly displayed on the Graticule. Uh, I've checked all the ranges and some of them are slightly out, but obviously we can get the service manual and we can uh, recalibrate that. Let's try something a bit higher. Now we're feeding in 100 kilohertz, saying 1 volt peak to peak, and we're still bang on. Now feeding in a 1 megahertz signal. The vertical scale is still 200 millivolts per division, and the horizontal is now at 200 nanosecs per division. So we're going to have a look at the cursors now, which you can use to make measurements instead of actually... Well, you can still use the Grazicure, but you can switch the cursors on. And I've already set this up, by the way. Uh, if you look at that, bang on, 1 megahertz, and obviously we press that again, we can get the period, which is 1 microsecond. Same for the vertical scale, 1 volt, peak to peak, bang on. You uh, control it by this knob, and if you want to do the other one, you press it, and then you can do the other one. Quite handy, that. And if we compare it to the Regal, the Regal agrees with the measurements. Waveform looks slightly different, obviously because we've got more horizontal divisions visible. But yeah, my function gen is now flat out at 10 MHz. And as you can see, we're at the maximum horizontal time base. And we're losing the signal on this side, and also it's a bit off on this side. But obviously we can get the service manual out and tweak that a bit. But uh, that's the fastest it'll go on time form mode, but this scope does feature the times 10 and times 50 mag. So we can put that on times 10 
and then that allows us to uh, get in there. But obviously, it's a bit jittery. That's actually my uh, function gem, which is out by the way. One thing to note with this scope if we pull out the cal handle, it gives us a times 10 mag on the vertical scale, and that gives us 500 microvolts per division, which is uh, useful for examining those very small signals measure noise from power supplies and stuff but when you do that it does limit the bandwidth now we're just going to have a quick look at the storage function it's quite poor compared to modern scopes it's got 4k points of memory and the sample rate is 20 mega samples per second which when you compare it with the regal up there which has got 24 meg points of memory and that's got a sample rate of 1 giga samples per second. But anyway, I'm currently measuring the mains via a differential probe. And if I want to really have a look at that, we're going to have to slow the time base right down. And it's flickery, it's worse than that in real life. And if we slow it right down, oh yeah. Oh, press the storage button. Bang. Just like a digital scope. And obviously I can save that waveform. And I can reposition it, that's the saved in the memory now, the reference waveform. So if this was to change, you'd be able to uh, compare it. You can turn that off. You've got the pre trigger, and you've also got a run stop button. So that's stop now. So yeah, it's a quite handy thing to have, even though the bandwidth is DC to 1 megahertz. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, thanks for watching, bye bye now.